We pause from the darkness to bring you light. I'll be back. How lame was that? It was really lame. Sap. We have to talk about an EP before we truly, truly get dark. Now, after the facelift tour, Alice in Chains decided to come back into the studio to start work on their second album, and instead came up with a couple of acoustic numbers. One of the members, Sean actually, had a dream about releasing an EP named Sap, and the band decided, well, why mess with fate? So they did it, and why not? Sap is going to be known for one thing, one thing that it did that really propelled uh, uh, Alice in Chains further into the spectrum, further into the universe, and that's the song Got Me Wrong. Got Me Wrong did fantastically well. It was a very widely requested song, a song that everybody really wanted to hear, because Alice in Chains was becoming one of the hottest musical properties out there. Facelift had done tremendously well. It eventually would go double platinum. Meanwhile, this EP definitely bridged the gap between Facelift and, eventually, the album Dirt. And based around this, we got five tracks, and we also got some guests. With songs such as Brother and Got Me Wrong, we got uh, the, uh, the benefit of a uh, member of Heart helping them out with some vocal duties. And then we also got Chris Cornell and a member of Mudhoney doing some work in Right Turn, which is track number three on the album. Got Me Wrong considers, or is considered to be the real centerpiece of this disc, principally because of its strength, and definitely, uh, as for an acoustic track, that it easily sounded like it could have appeared as perhaps a, a B-side on the facelift uh, release, either that or something that maybe should have, you know, could have showcased the things to come. Really, whenever you listen to a couple of these tracks, man oh man, do they seem to fit well with a later album, the Tripod album because it's definitely different. It's definitely something that has a bit of a, of a strange resonance to them. But I think more so, this is something that showcased that the unplugged idea was something that was going to be a strength for Alice in Chains, and something that eventually did happen. And really, whenever that happened, holy crap. But we'll get to that. Overall, as an EP, this is something that, uh, really, as a collector of music, is a joy to hear. Uh, Brother is a tremendously strong opening track, very, very soft, and really the registers on this showcased a side of Alice in Chains that perhaps was not something that you heard too often on the facelift disc. You heard a lot of intimacy. You heard a lot of just careful beauty that was being planned by these, uh, by these songs. And to be perfectly honest, that's probably exactly what the band was going for. These numbers were not one that had necessarily a directly sinister side. However, it was something that perhaps the sinister side was able to echo a little bit through the beauty. This is also one that features Right Turn and Am I Inside. Am I Inside being a track that we would see later in, in other varieties, uh, though I believe they were more so in unlicensed varieties. However, these two tracks also are able to really pull together the, the bulk of uh, the latter eight minutes of this EP, and do so by showcasing the band just trying some new things and really strong, uh, being very strong about it. Am I Inside being fa uh, famously written by Lane Staley. Meanwhile, uh, The Right Turn was the, common, uh, the combined effort of the band, as well as Chris Cornell and the member Mark of Mudhoney. Overall, this is an EP I definitely recommend. It's a cool little number. It's not something that's very long. Uh, so it's something that may not seem like it's an essential piece of Alice in Chains lore, but God, you absolutely need to have this one. If you have Jar of Flies and you don't have Sap, and I know we haven't talked about Jar of Flies yet, but who cares about continu uh, continuity at this stage of the game, uh, you really do need to get Sap. Really create the bookends. A fun thing to do, actually, is listening to Jar of Flies and Sap back-to-back, -back, principally because the sound that you get from that, the, the idea that you get from that is a really, really strange album which, of course, they were released at two completely different moments in time. However, it's still a pretty cool idea. Something to try if you're really bored one night. So yeah, the darkness. We're going to get to that. Um, we'll be right back.